come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> we sincerely welcome you and thanks for joining us on the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, which is a podcast recording of basically what's been described as a book club for movies, where four of us gather in a dank, dark basement and watch a movie that sprung on us by one of the group never know what you're going to watch well i guess we know we can advance yeah we but, know <laughs> yeah uh so you can find our past episodes on itunes stitcher radio podcast addict and more if you did find us there we ask that you'll go the extra mile give us a like a star rating or a review because it helps us find other like-minded folks like yourself yes, subscribe Do, you can, they, can, they can subscribe right yeah. Please do. Yeah. yeah. That's still a thing. That's right. You can yeah. get our episodes delivered automatically to your phone or device every week, every Saturday. Ironic, isn't it? With the name of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Almost like it's yeah. planned that way. Yeah. Weird. You can, uh, <laughs> and you can write to us, and we hope that you will. And let us know how we're doing on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can find us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Who are these internet radio superstars, you ask? Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And we tonight, should, we what? We should change it to, like, release this podcast on Tuesdays. Just to fuck with people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should do. <laughs> we do release, like, early Saturday morning. Yeah, it's the Saturday yeah. morning it's so freak show. you yeah. can <laughs> listen to it on Saturday night and yeah. have your own Saturday Night Freak Show. Ooh. Um, I like so that. So tonight, mm-hmm. we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. What did we watch tonight on the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> we watched a movie called Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jared Sin in 3D. 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 And that you is the full it. title. Yes. <laughs> you might know it by its other title, Superfluous Travels Through the Mountains of Nonsense. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, there's at least, in the, in the words of one of my favorite Simpsons episodes, I can think of at least two things wrong with that title. Uh, maybe we can come up with a better one by the end, but that one's not too bad. Superfluous <laughs> Journeys Through the Mountains, mountains of, of Nonsense. nonsense. That's, <laughs> that is that's the most it. accurate title that could possibly be placed on this movie. All right, so this movie was made in and the done. year. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show. And we're out. It was made in the year 1983 <laughs> by a by young who? film director named Charles Band. Ah, the famous Charles Band. Mm-hmm. So Charles Band is kind of, uh, you know, one of those, not patron saints. What do we call the, like, a <laughs> I was going to say an enigma. Regular, <laughs> uh, yeah, in our, yeah. Yeah. He's made a few appearances. You're, you're putting him on a much higher pedestal than I was yeah. going to. Yeah. Well, you say he's made a couple of appearances on The Freak Show. We have talked about Charles Band produced movies before, Mm -hmm. like Arena and Robot Jocks and Reanimator. Mm -hmm. It feels like I'm missing something. There was probably a couple other ones that we've done. directed as well. Did we? Because I thought this was the first one that he directed. What about Puppet Master? He didn't direct it, but he produced it. Did his dad direct that one? No. His dad directed one that we watched down here, I think. Damn, did he? Who directed Puppet Master? I think it's a David Schmoller. Did David Schmoller direct Puppet That's a Master? Fake name. Schmoller. <laughs> so who is Charles Band? Charles Band is Full Moon, isn't he? Yes. Yep. What's What's Full Full Moon? It, it was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, I mean, it was a production company. It was a video name back in the what eighties? Late eighties, going into the nineties. Yes. Cheap. Yeah. Cheap movies. Cheap ass say. movies. Yeah. He was, okay, so I keep saying the analog to Charles Mann was Roger Corman uh. in the uh, 60s and 70s. Or, yes. You know, both of these guys, basically, I think it's the idea death is, race-ish. yeah, we're going to, you know, they, they would set up a production where they would spend as little money as possible and just crank stuff out. Not unlike Canon Films. Well, they actually spent some money. Yeah, you know, yeah. These guys had no money. <laughs> no, <laughs> really? Yeah. And would try to crank the oh, Castle Freak was the other. Oh, one Castle yes. Freak! Castle but Freak. Stuart that Gordon was, directed that, was, that. Did he? Well, you might or know Charles that? Band Albert from directing Band. the Ginger Dead Man movies oh, Ginger Dead and the Evil Bong movies. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he directed all those there and their five sequels. Evil Bong movies. And he Just directed all knows. of them. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Yeah, he's, he's stuck with his franchise. The later puppet. There's at least one or two puppet masters. Yeah, the later ones he directed. Did, yeah, I'm sure. Who directed Castle Freak? I'm looking. It was Stuart Gordon. 
Was it Stuart Gordon? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we've had Stuart Gordon movies on the show like at least three Indeed. times. Indeed we have. But they were all produced by Charles Band, so we ended up talking about Charles Band and and his band of uh, merry, merry <laughs> movie makers. His band of merry movie makers. Um, <laughs> Stuart Gordon, okay. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, the guy's still around, but okay, so before before there was Full Moon uh, Pictures, there was a company that he made called Empire Pictures. Ah, uh, yes. This became Full Moon, like, later on. Uh, so Empire Pictures, and the reason kind of that I, I brought this movie here tonight is they have just released a box set, of, oh, yeah, a Blu-ray did, box set they? of, like, all their early movies, or, you know, like, a lot of them, including Arena, I think, and, like, Dungeon Master and... Trancers, I think, might be in mm-hmm. that, and Metal Storm. So you can pick up this box set for like uh, two hundred dollars or something oh, directly God, from no. wow. Charles Band himself. I mean, yeah. this movie alone is worth at least half that price tag. <laughs> I like the way they say there's like you know eighteen <laughs> movies or something in the set, but they count Metal Storm twice because there's the two D version. Oh, and the so that's bullshit! Yeah, she is. Yeah. Uh, so Charles Band had uh, he had directed a movie. In 1981, I, I believe, 1981, 82, called Parasite. Any of you heard of this? Yes, that was another 3D one, wasn't it? Yes. Right. And it was the feature film debut of Demi Moore. Huh. Oh, wow. And it's another post-apocalyptic thing where a scientist is working on these parasites that crawl around and drop onto the camera from overhead and explode out of mm, people's guts in lovely. 3D. And uh, this was in response to a 3D renaissance that was taking place in the 1980s. Um, I mean, we've talked about my love of 3D movies before on this show. There's several 3D films that we've done. Mm -hmm. Uh, But just to reiterate, 3D was a big thing when they discovered how to do it theatrically in the 1950s. Uh, And so for 1953 to 54, Hollywood made like I don't know, 50 odd 3D movies and uh, everybody keeps thinking that they were red and blue glasses, but they weren't in the 50s. They were f- either you know black and white or color, but they were done with a Polaroid uh, 3D system. So they were, you know, uh, the sunglasses, okay. paper ones back then. You didn't actually get sure the, the plastic keep lenses this cheap. And then uh, 3D died out because TV and CinemaScope came around. And in the 1980s, this uh, Spanish, or maybe it was a Mexican production company, made a movie called Coming At Ya. <laughs> where it is straight to the gonna, point. Yeah. Yeah. Straight to the point. Right on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right there. <laughs> uh, it is full of just, I mean, it's like every 30 seconds or so in that movie. Like the plot, it's a spaghetti western. But the plot is like so nonsensical. It is basically them just chucking shit at the camera for an hour and a half. And this movie, as cheap and as shitty as it was, became a surprise box office success. So everybody in Hollywood suddenly said, 3D, it's back. We all have to make 3D movies. Yes. This happens every couple decades where they're just like, oh, 3D. Mm-hmm. Everyone and, loves it now. And Colin rejoices. People yeah. can't see it. Yeah. Sounds like, yeah. Yes. Well, Colin's, is, the next generation Colin will be like 80 and he'll be like, it's back again. <laughs> it's back again. Well, this time yes. it's not like it's lasted a lot longer than it did, you know, mm. because again, the, 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 the 80s boom was 82 to 83. By 84, it was gone. Done. Right. Do we know Freddy Krueger movies in 3D besides uh, Freddy's Dead? Freddy's Dead did the end of the end uh, of it, yeah. But they did the red and blue 3D, and that was like 91. Mm. So that was kind of uh, because Friday the 13th had done it. Mm. They were like, well, Freddy has to be in 3D of at course. some point. Um, but uh, good old Charlie Band, since he was early on in this process, right? He didn't. He did Parasite in 1982. And uh, Universal said, you know, well, we got to get in on this because, you know, they'd made Friday the 13th Part 3. They're like, we're going to throw money at 3D. We're going to do a big budget 3D movie, and it's going to be called Jaws 3D. Mm, Which is, Mm. well, the 3D (laughs) is not great in that. What are you talking about? Go back and listen to our podcast episode. Did you see it in 3D? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I've seen it in 3D. But it's got yeah. the, it's the pokey 3D. But that, like, parts and it's, bones. it's so many look Getting over sharks. there and someone pointing at you in 3D. And then the shark looks like a fucking potato floating in space oh, yeah, coming at does. you in 3D. Because oh, it actually like, looks the size that it really is, yeah, it which just, is like a foot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it so comes in, it breaks that glass. Oh, they got that scene. It's it? awful. There was a theater uh, in towards Chicago that did it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you saw like the, like recently. Then. That's Within like, like the, the past eight or nine years, probably. Yeah, they yeah. remastered yeah. it. Uh-huh. The DCP. That's yeah. the one that's on uh, on the Blu ray. Nice. Yeah. 
Well, that's the kind of 3D. I didn't get to see yeah. Jaws 3D in the theater, right? And that was the one I wanted to see. And I was aware that these other ones were around, but nobody would take me to see them. I was a little kid going like, I want to go see these movies. And, you know, mm-hmm. mom and dad are like, no. So then since you couldn't like, see Colin, them. Colin, no, we have taste. <laughs> right. Yeah. You will not see the movies. And we need to raise our son to have taste. God damn it. So. God damn it. We want and you, you rebelled like hardcore, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> they tried. like, no, I will watch everything. <laughs> well, this is a cautionary tale to all you parents out there, or oh. would-be parents, that by denying your kid <laughs> these kind of things may, builds an obsession. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is one of those like things that has gripped me my entire life is trying to see these movies that I missed <laughs> hunting them like the great white buffalo oh that God. they are, right? What am I the great white whale right now that is going to come back. <laughs> so yeah. Uh. yeah, cuz then I had to learn the process of how you make 3D movies. I made my own 3D movies. I bought 3D equipment from England so I could make, you know, 8 mm 3D movies You've and converted for the 13th. The, yes. Uh, if you go back and listen de resistance. <laughs> Uh huh. You can do it too, uh, reader or listeners at home. <laughs> Dear reader, yeah. <laughs> so you have to get the uh, the Jason or what was it the from Crystal Lake to Manhattan box set. Yeah, that's I think the left eye, and the modern Blu-ray release is the right eye, and you can put them together in After Effects. It's so, much work. God, so much oh, yeah. work. My God, so much work. Have it, He's and it works, it. and it's awesome because they put it out on Blu-ray, but it's red and blue. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, do you guys remember in the 90s when TGI, TGIF did a 3D night? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Do you oh, yeah. remember Home Improvement, the sandwich? Like they had like yeah. a six foot sub coming Whoa. through the screen. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, I was, that episode. it was the most ham fisted attempt at 3D I've ever seen in pop culture That's ever. Yeah. wonderful. Because it, was, it was great. They, like, it was like a promotional thing that they were giving them out and they would have like a little bumper come they on the screen. Like, like, they were like, your glasses now. They came, they, came, they came in like the TV guide, yeah. in, like the newspaper. Yeah. yeah. It was like a, it was a big thing. It was a big cultural. When they like used to phenomenon do cool stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, the, the little like ABC logo would pop on with this 3D glasses on when you were supposed oh, yeah. to put oh, them on. And it was, right. but was like it was not like written to be 3D. It was like let's just insert these scenes that will be 3D. It was yeah. like all. It was like four shows that. Night, yeah. Or was it six? Like six half hour shows or something like. It that? was yeah something whatever their TGIF yeah. lineup at yeah. the time was. Yeah. Every once in a while yeah. they do like yeah. some kind yeah. of yeah. 3D thing Boy Meets World kind of stuff. Yeah. An episode of Medium in 3D at one point. I remember those glasses came in the in the TV guide Go and I TV remember guide. they did a halftime show with the Rolling Stones at the Super Bowl oh in yeah, 3D mm, yeah. They had to go get yep. glasses and then even before that I remember Svanguli in Chicago did uh, the return or the revenge of the creature in 3D <laughs> and here in town we had a late night guy who did uh, one called the mask and you had to go to like 7-eleven and get the Cool. Nice. Yeah. So 3D has always been like this, <laughs> this <laughs> thing. Yeah. This yeah. gimmick. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It is a gimmick. It's always been a gimmick. Um, and yeah, I guess you that's hear that, the, James Cameron. Yeah, it's a it's gimmick. A gimmick. <laughs> well, see, as of this week, IMAX is phasing out 3D in a lot I of their that, things because yeah. they, they realize people just want IMAX. They don't want IMAX 3D, yeah. which true. we've all around this table have been saying for a number of years now. Well, this is a this is a, a, a distinction, I guess, that we have to make about like the the post James Cameron 3. 3D, you know, which is now the, and I'm saying air quotes, perfected 3D, right? Mm. The digital 3D, they're able to lock down the images. So, I mean, it does, when you put the glasses on, it perfectly all, you know, syncs up, comes together. You don't get the eye strain like you used to, you know, back with these films or even the ones Mm. from the 40s. Um, But there's a difference in, uh, they're, they're aware that it's a gimmick, so they're trying to make a movie that will play in both 2D and 3D, mm-hmm. where these movies are like, they're made to be seen in 3D, and if you see them in 2D, they're ridiculous. I mean, I'm saying they're ridiculous in 3D, sure. but... In 2D, they're worthless. You know? you well, know? in 3D, they could yeah, be worthless yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, I guess... <laughs> it's just a polished turd at that point, yeah, you know? The point of it is, I mean, like, when you're watching these things, the point of them is that they're going to poke shit yeah. out at the... You know, because you're paying the money, you're putting on the glasses and sitting in the dark, so we're going to poke shit, like, yeah. within a foot of your face. Yeah. Dramatic 3D every uh, 10, 15 minutes yeah. or so. I want to slow push in on a branch. That's yeah. yeah. Extended that shot of a I fucking want. tree. Yeah. <laughs> that is 3D. Uh huh. And you're like, ooh, look at that. Look at that. I can see everything. So that's what I'm thinking. You're supposed to reach out and see if you can like touch right, the thing. Which you yeah. did the entire time. Oh, yeah, movie. yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get my money's worth. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if it's on, it's like, ooh. He's just transported back to being a 12 year old. <laughs> he is. Uh-huh. Like, he ah. is. Uh huh. It's a magic, magic time of year. Mm-hmm. It's when you're 12 and all this stuff. Yeah. 
The uh, but I think you know I mean that's where how they've changed 3D. So now the depth is a lot sh- more shallow. You know. Yes. Nothing sticks out into the audience as much. It goes as, back instead of forward. But it, it doesn't even like... go back as far as that does. No, it's no. like a, it's like a shallow depth of field. It's yeah. like they were just like move the move the background back a little bit, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And they do this thing, you know, with movies now because they're composing them. Well, they're being converted, I guess, to 3D. They're not even shot that way anymore. Yeah. But they shoot well, it like a 2D movie, where you know they'll have they'll do rack focuses and they'll throw the background out of focus. If you looked at the the photography in this, it's all um, what do you call that? Uh, the super depth. There, you know, it's all it's all in focus. Mm-hmm. So you can either focus on the thing like that's way the hell in the background the mountain range in the background or the tip of the gun that's poking out at you but it's all in focus so you're doing the focusing with your own eyes which i'm like that's the way that you shoot 3d and they've lost the ability to do that now because they know it's got to play on tv yeah. as a 2d film so this movie so this movie uh <laughs> was made so by uh charles band it, so the the fact that he was making this just a little more history before we get into the actual thing itself. Uh, so he was uh, he was already in the desert filming this as this the follow up to Metal Storm. Went to Cannes Film Festival and was trying to sell the rights to it. Universal sitting there going like, "We've got Jaws 3D coming out, and we're going to be outfitting all of these theaters to play 3D because they actually had to ship, build, and ship these lenses." Mm-hmm. Uh, and new screens to all the theaters that Jaws 3D was going to come out in, because I think it was like the biggest 3D rollout in theaters, like 1,500 screens that they were going to do in one weekend. So they got to get their money's worth. And they said, well, since What's these filming? theaters are already equipped, why don't we buy a movie and put it out uh, two weeks after Jaws 3D in the same theaters? And it just so happens Charlie Band was sitting there going like, I got Metal Storm. Yeah. Metal Storm is single-handedly responsible for full moon pictures because he made oh. so much money on this movie, oh, which was nothing. Oh, no. But to him, it was like, you know, <laughs> right. it was hitting oh, the no. fucking jackpot. And then he was able to, to make full moon pictures and it funded like the rest of his career. Oh, God. <laughs> So oh man, so you, to think. what you're saying when time travel's perfected, we go back in time and stop this movie from happening. <laughs> and then you don't Charles have, yeah. 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 Well, Shit. what would he still be doing? He'd still be doing empire pictures, I guess yeah. in Italy. Like yeah, all of his on, movies on his made. castle and whatever is going on over there. He yeah. had a castle, I think. Yeah, because he had bought like Dino De Laurentiis's yeah. uh, Cinecitta or whatever the the Cinema City, yeah, yeah. the studio in uh, in Rome, yeah, which I think was Fellini's before that. It was like yes. Fellini built it, De, La- De Laurentiis bought it, like from Barbarella and yeah. you know, Danger Diabolic there and all that, and then Charles Band Charles uh, purchased like, it after that. And I will shoot Castle Freak here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so this movie. It's a metal this storm. Movie. Metal storm. Metal storm. Where does the title of this the movie come yeah, from, Colin? This movie has no damn business being called Metal Storm. It's an awesome title, though. <laughs> metal Storm. It, it, You're like, I, I want to yeah, see that. Yep, but uh, misleading, the, to say even, the least. Even the subtitle is misleading, yeah. Colin, now that I've seen the <laughs> That's movie. That's true. Yeah. That, that is part true. Is misleading as I well. said there were two things wrong with this title. Jesus. The uh, the one true thing about this title is there's metal in this movie. I would say the 3D the part is, is the, the true most, part. Yeah. There's sh- oh yeah, there's the, the 3D. 3D. Everything else is a goddamn lie. There's, there's, <laughs> there's shards of metal. It's a goddamn okay, there, so yeah, there are shards of metal <laughs> all over the ground, and we're we're like, oh well, maybe that means that it rained metal during a metal storm. <laughs> That's and all what you're inferring. Yeah. This is all what you're inferring. Yeah, not what is. T- like, this right, is not ex- sense. But this is not explained no, to us in the movie like, at all. The only thing that we that I gathered was he mentions the sand wars, and I'm guessing the metal storm is the remnants. The remnants of the, of the sand wars. Yes, the That's, remnants of yeah. the things being blown up in in the world. Uh, shrapnel pieces. and whatnot. It yeah. was so big that there are just pieces everywhere. Yeah. yeah. That's. But That's again, it. they don't explain that. That's no. just. No. piecing what we can together. Well, at least they do kind of, like, allude to that. They don't, like, run into a cave and go, like, we better get inside before the sky opens up before and another metal, metal storm, storm comes. comes down on Yeah. I think I would have appreciated would have Yeah, that actually, that would, that would have helped. <laughs> like, oh, this had the title. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the destruction of Jared Sin. Clearly, this is a movie about a guy named Jared Sin who has laid waste to large swaths, swathes, swaths, swaths of 
the landscape of this planet that we're on, an unidentified, we're assuming it's a planet. I mean, it's a, it's, Death it's Valley. definitely a planet. <laughs> we don't think it's Earth of the future. I mean, they don't give us enough context for anything. I fucking no. I, there's a kid. There's little kids wearing like army hats. I don't know. Uh, it's a rock quarry. <laughs> oh my god! When they go to the circus tent village, everyone, everyone is wearing a completely different outfit from one another. Like, yeah. like so much so that you know, Sean was like, "What was the costuming like on this?" I don't think there was any. I think it was no. extras. Bring what you have. There was a woman like wearing hot pink jogging suit, and there was little kids wearing camo hats literally like u.s army hats. well and there was like another woman wearing like, what looked like like harem pants like mc yeah. Hammer pants and like a top that matched and like like just yeah. any different out but is it well in 1983 <laughs> yeah. nobody that everyone has completely different like, outfits yeah, maybe. yeah. They it's had eclectic to scrape no together. i don't know <laughs> Anything they could wear yeah. from the war that happened. They're like yeah, pulling the clothes off dead bodies from the sand wars and everything. Their tents That's looked what? like they were in pretty good shape, though. Well, yeah. The circus tents looked pretty new. Did you see that new. cantina? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty was, good. Yeah. That girl was nice playing video games in that cantina. That was a really sleek cantina. Mm-hmm. And they were pl- playing some pretty sweet, like, future techno music and there was like sure. neon lights and frosted glass bars and like that was pretty sweet. So they couldn't man. Afford, afford any chairs so it's like you're going yeah. to the swanky joint and like come sit, sit on, on the, the dirt ground. floor, mm. floor. Yeah. it's foreign French. <laughs> is that what it is oh well basically this movie all right am i reading this right it is a western we can go through this and actually sub out all of the character types as western archetypes we have the sheriff sure. who is, or whatever, the ranger, he's called the ranger, mm-hmm. named Dogen? Dogen. Dogen. Yeah. Dogen. Oh, Dogen. Sure. All right. Yep. Dogen, who ha- comes to the aid of a. Is he uh, the finder? The main guy yeah, you're talking yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah. The man in black? Yeah. He's Country right. Mac. <laughs> country Mac. Yeah. This is yeah. poor man's Max Mad Max. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it very much is. This movie wants to be Mad Max so much. So badly. So, so badly. The fucking guy from Road Warrior, who's the lead, you know, whatever. Uh, what was his fucking name? Like, Patatopoulos or whatever. The guy, Mike Preston, the actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They cast him as Jared Sin. I don't remember him in fucking Mad He's the Road leader Warrior. of the fucking yeah. little town, the oil town or whatever. Oh. oh. Or oil city out in the middle of the desert. It's like okay. the fucking mayor or He's whatever. got better hair in that movie. Yeah. I guess. Oh, his hair in this movie is it's a oh, bowl wonderful. cut. He looks like it's a widow's peaked bowl cut. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> well, who is Jared Sin, the antagonist? That's a, that's a terribly good question, yeah. Colin. Yeah. I would love to answer it for you. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot. Come on, give it a shot. He for the is, listeners out, he's a, out there. He's, he's, he's a, a crystal he's, worshiper. He's a, he's a crystal worshiper, a rebel leader, of, <laughs> and he's bringing together all the one eyes, as they say in this The movie. one eyes. Mm-hmm. The, Wait, do what, we, the, cy- the cyclopians. The cyclopians. I think, the cyclopians, yeah. I think yeah. he says. Uh-huh. He's bringing them all together so that he can gather power. And then rule the land. The different tribes of these indigenous people. Yes. Yeah. Right? The Indians, basically, in our Western analogy. Yeah. There's all different. We can tell them apart. Native because, non-sentience. Yeah. Some of them wear red turbans and gas masks. Yep. With, uh, like, some chi- of them, with like child faces on them. Did you yeah, see that? That was yeah. weird. Is that what those little things They're like little child faces. Mm. That was weird, yeah. man. Well, there was at least them, and then there was the one, the one-eyed guys. The guys who had sacrificed their eyes somehow to Jared said, I think, was a... Yeah. Uh, line that they had spoken did they did they say that i missed sure. that That's- well most movie cyclopses which i've seen a couple that Cyclopi. were cy- cyclopians no it's a plural cyclopians. cyclopi 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 i like that i like that i like that this is a pretty good one in crawl have you seen crawl mm-hmm. animatronic no. like eye and the makeup Ooh. and the guy he's got an eye in the middle crawl of the head. warrior king hey what? Did you say crawl? Crawl. <laughs> crawl the not, warrior not king? Crawl. Crawl. Yeah. Crawl. crawl. Yeah, okay. I know, the glaive and crawl. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Colin, would you consider yourself a movie Cyclops expert? <laughs> I can only point out these two. Well, no, there was one in, uh, was it Jason and the Argonauts? Yeah, there, there was, is yes. one in that movie. Yep. Yeah, and then I'm going to go with yes. That's three. I All right. Yeah. Three yeah. That's covers yeah. it to free. I think there might be one in the Seven Voyages of Sinbad Maybe as well. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, there might be them in the, They might be in both. They're both Ray Harryhausen, so he might he might reuse that. Yeah, Either way, <laughs> if, I, need, my if I needed now. a Cyclops expert, Cyclops I'm coming to you. Crash? So, I don't, was think, there? I I don't, think, so. don't think so. No, there's a giant robot with boobs. 
<laughs> yeah. That's what yes. I think she had two eyes. She had two eyes. Yeah. And two boobs. They obviously weren't looking at the eyes. <laughs> the boob shot something. They did. <laughs> she was a fembot before yeah. they were fembots. Yeah. It was magical. Star Crash. Got to go listen Lost to that, that episode that we did. Um, <laughs> all right. So Jared said he's some kind of magic user or something. He's wants to be. He says he's uh, Dojin says he's a highborn who is leading all of the native people yeah. to uh, massacre the um, like miners and stuff, the settlers in this area, because they're trying to take back their land. Mm-hmm. And he wants to be he's installed an, as yes. their king. He's an opportunist. Yeah, like the piece of core has been broken, we learn at the very beginning of this movie. Jared Sin is running wild. Mm-hmm. This land is off limits. This could be the destruction of Jared Sin, of which the title alludes to. I see what you did there, and I don't like it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, wouldn't know what, that or you're like, but Jared Sin's going to die at the end of this movie, right? He will he's be gonna, destructed. He's going to be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so right I take back everything i ever said over the year that i've been building up this movie that's the other key uh, part of this we've been talking this one up so we're glad that you've stuck with you've us. been uh, talking that, this up well i mean well, i mean i have too <laughs> i kind of i dig at him every time it's like why aren't we watching metal storm colin mm-hmm. oh I know you why. did this you did this <laughs> sean <laughs> you willed it into existence ah uh, well and i just you know. it was happy to oblige um, you were just coming off your fucking Cobra High. You're like, I'm picking anything. <laughs> Metal Storm. It's like they will forgive me this week for you know picking right. Metal Storm. Mm. That probably isn't going to be the case. Mm. Uh, I can feel the the, have, the have, tension have in the room right now. Been kicked off their own podcast. You know, <laughs> Has that happened before? Well, there was always Mean Guns. We can't go that oh, way. It has God to be better damn than Mean one. Guns. Um, okay. I mean, well, so Dojin, uh, Dogen, Dogen? Yep. Dogen. he teams up with Kelly Preston, John Travolta's For a wife, hot minute. Mm-hmm. Who was wandering around in the desert with her dad, trying to mine crystals from a played out right. mine. Uh, this is also the same year that she was in Christine, in a very ah. brief part, mm-hmm. before she met Travolta, I'm mm-hmm. assuming. Um, yeah, and Jared Sin has a son named Ball. Ball! <laughs> That's two A's. Ball. Does, doesn't, ma- <laughs> doesn't matter. Ball. It's still ball. ball. What is your name? This is ball. No, it's ball. <laughs> How, well, describe, uh, describe ball, ball for us. Uh, He's got one shitty arm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got like a silver cap on, on his half head. his face. You can't over really his speak. He looks half lizard. He's very green. Half lizard. He's very green. He talks out of one of those like smoker. Uh, voice box yeah. things. It's a very it's odd funny. character <laughs> because you hear him talking and you're like, why is his lips not moving? It's just a thing that he does. And his arm, his one, it's like a robotic arm, but it's not because it's, it's a robotic like, stump. It's a stump. It's just like a, Basically. it looks like a battering ram, like a short battering ram, but it shoots like venom, like like but fluorescent green out. venom. It it shoots does. out, then like it flips out the claw yeah. and then it shoots fucking green venom. Yeah. <laughs> You're what making it sound do? a lot cooler than it actually. It, 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 like, it, like, that's what I'm trying to win. The it's like, it paralyzes you. It's like it, at least it did for the dad because it didn't do anything else to him. It just he kind of just froze yeah. there on the ground. It's like acidic. Like it sizzles, but not, nothing really it happens. It smokes. I wouldn't say acidic. <laughs> it doesn't burn through anything. That's just true. Kind of, that's true. Yeah, it might be slightly warm. You know, that's right. why it's, it's like, you know. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> what does it do to you if you're exposed to this magical it goo? It's like it paralyzes you. Yeah, but then it also it trip. You start tripping. Yeah, it trans- oh, yeah, yeah. Well, do you trip or do you get transported to, to a another plane dimension of existence that's ruled by the evil Jared Sin? I really don't know, Colin. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. I don't think like anybody it. can answer this. A couple characters travel there at certain points or, for for reasons we don't understand. <laughs> no. Well, let's try to work through this. We're okay. movie critics. God damn it. We're going to figure, we're going to understand this well, which, movie. All right, which, which one? Yeah, start with the first trip. What was the first trip? <laughs> uh, father. Yeah, I think most of them all go the same way, what right? Father? You are, which father? Her father, Kelly Preston's Kelly dad. Kelly Preston's dad. He trips out? Yes. Yeah. When, wow. This is where we first find out about out, didn't you? <laughs> the, the psychedelic properties of the glowing green goo. Mm-hmm. You get trans If you get sprayed with this, you get transported to a bluish, smoky, slow motion netherworld where the ground is covered we'll with metal shards. Because it's sexy over there. And in that world, you meet Jared Sin. 
Mm-hmm. Who doesn't actually ever leave his base, if I'm correct? Doesn't feel like it. He doesn't need to. Uh, not until later. <laughs> he he just... makes his little lizard sun duels work for him. <laughs> right, yeah. Ball. <laughs> ball. Where is ball? Ball. Oh, <laughs> I like that better. Mm, yes, ball. Yep. Uh, Dojin, of course, runs into ball at some point. He gets sprayed with the goo, but Jared Sin finds out that Dojin's too strong because he's got Diana with him. Diana? Yeah. Diana? I have a lot of problems with that Diana. spelling. Yeah, let's let's spell it out. D H Y A N A. It's very futuristic. Is it? Yeah. You have, eh. to, you have to add letters. To it's very shit. hipster. It's just like yeah. Alex A L X. Yeah. We're getting this from the credits Alex. at the yep. end of the movie. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you're not Zach. You're Zax. Z A X. Come on! In the future, right. everybody's going to be name naming their kids this way. Jared. His name's Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Jared. Uh, Jared Hyphen dash sin. sin. Yeah, but it's still Jared. Jared sin. That's like sign. Like Jared sign. Yeah. Kind like son, like I don't want you to go through the pain I did of having the name Jared for my entire life. <laughs> Your name will be Ball. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> and that's better. Uh-huh. Ball is an entirely ineffectual general. Ineffectual. <laughs> Kind of ineffective. <laughs> Every time this guy shows up, okay, so he's tasked with, you know, once uh, Dojin, the ranger, is on the case mm-hmm. and hunting Jared Sin, Ball is sent by his father to go out and find this guy and get rid of him. I think he has three confrontations with Dojin. The first time, he sprays him with the goo, right? Like, mm-hmm. And Dojin's like, ah, I lost my gun and I'm collapsed to the ground. And Ball turns around and runs away. Basically. Yeah. Kelly Preston does start shooting a little bit. I think she shoots once, and they're like, ah! <laughs> that way they we go. must flee! The second time, uh, there's a car chase, I believe, and at the end of that... A car chase at a brisk eight miles per hour. <laughs> that feels like most of... The Where car the cars are too really. afraid to touch each other. Basically, or to round a corner too fast. Yeah. These cars, again, we're saying they're heavily Mad Max inspired, so they're yes. kind yeah. of junk. But with like a third around. of the budget. Right. Yeah. Junk yeah, junk armor dune buggies, basically. Yeah. 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 Fast yeah. and Furious, this is not. No. no. Yeah. Not very fast and not very furious. No. no. Well, Leisurely. The have, there's like <laughs> and a, deadly. <laughs> People almost died in this movie. I, I'm True. convinced they killed a stunt guy or an extra in this movie. Yeah. I'm pretty have. sure they did. Like they plowed. I think over. we just saw someone die on screen, guys. Like I, I well, think there's two we, angles, and when they cut the other angle, well, no, no, no. Sorry, you're right because the the guy there's a guy on the right and a guy on the left. Yeah. yeah. The, the 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 whatever the fuck crazy skull faced looking uh, do the dojin buggy dojin yeah. buggy. Comes over a hill, and I think those guys are supposed to, like, one go Separate. one way and one go the other way. But they both go they left. They both go <laughs> under the path of this thing in slow motion, Oy. now yeah. gaining air and coming down. And they're, like, right in the fucking path yeah. of this thing. And we're like, oh, oh, Jesus. Cuts to a wider angle, and you see the guy on the left actually does, like, roll away. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to the guy on yeah, the right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't see what happens to the guy on the right. It really does look like it clips him. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. does. Oh, yeah. It does By not look like something like we were... the whole like force ran. of the yeah. thing? Like, yeah. 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 The like, guy. It felt like a scene we weren't meant to see, but somehow yeah. got left in this movie. Like, like it seemed well, we like, did, yeah, we did yeah. the stunt once. Yeah, I can't cut it out. Yeah, like, he thanks, Frank. He it's like have, that. He would have wanted it this way. <laughs> yeah, have, you, yeah. <laughs> have you guys seen that chariot race scene in the original Ben Hur where someone died? Mm, like that's no, what it reminded me of. Yeah, I was like, oh god, I'm watching someone die on screen again. Yeah, <laughs> it does give you that feeling. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, but this is also the kind of stuff I like about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> movie <laughs> stuff because it's just like, oh Jesus, I like that guy almost got killed doing that. Yeah. Well, we hope that he didn't. I didn't hear that he did. We'll have to and look this up. Couldn't find anything about it. Yeah, the death on Metal Storm. Um, there's also, you know, I mean, there's a lot of uh, driving in this movie. It's kind of it's the movie where like they get a bunch of stunt guys together for a weekend and says we're going to go out in the desert and make a movie. So we rig all these cars together and then we just kind of race around this quarry and we're so ecstatic to be doing it in 3D. We'll just strap these 3D cameras to the top of the car or the the wheel or we'll follow behind or the just car. Or be in front of it. <clears throat> and then, you know what would make this even better for the audience? I think if we slowed it down and showed it in slow motion... Or perhaps if we just kept using this footage over and, and over, over and, and over, over again. again. 
This is exciting filmmaking. We right figured here. how much of this movie, I mean, besides all the flying, the flying scenes, the driving scenes, the walking scenes, the slow motion uh, hallucinogenic scenes, how long do you think this movie would run if you cut all that out? Fifty minutes. Oh, I think it, this could easily be a thirty-minute. Yeah, short. I was gonna say maybe forty, forty-five minutes. Yeah, I think it's yeah, yeah. probably forty or so. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of plot. No. There's no. so many, especially like the front half of the movie. There's so many scenes without even any dialogue. Yeah. Of just like really just long stuff of walking and driving. Really and hoping his, on that score to get him through this yeah. movie. And his look. The score is pretty his, decent. Though. That's not bad. There's just shots of him staring mm-hmm. for a really long time. But she yeah. does well. What's his name? Does Jeffrey uh, Byron or something you know, like, like that? Like you said, he only has very... one look. Yeah. He has, he has like no, he crazy has, eyes. He has, and that's it. he has two looks. Staring and wide-eyed staring. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's yep. all he very has. True. This is to convey a sexy. range of emotions. Yeah, that's right. Like sexy He's lover. He's got sexy. That's uh, the staring. <laughs> chopping the blood tree. <laughs> He's got the don't fuck with me stare. Is that the wide eyed? Yeah, that's, that's that wide-eyed. Is. It's the, the crazy wide-eyed. wide-eyed. Crazy eyes. Staring and wide-eyed staring. That's it. That's mm-hmm. all he's got. The, uh, the, yeah. He's just always trying to be a formidable opponent. He's cut from the mold of like the man with no name. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. Why do you do that to the man with no name? That's... <laughs> The man with no name, man with no the acting no ability, yeah. whatever. He comes out of the, the desert. Man no the man with no presence. Yeah. I don't know what this guy did anything the after man with this no movie. no charisma. I mean, you can't show this to people and be like, put me in your movie. Yeah. yeah. Look at my demo reel. Yeah. I was in Metal Storm, for God's sakes. You know, they had like, oh, were you Jared Sin? Well, no. No, like, no, oh, were you, no. Were you the Metal Storm? Well, no. No, that didn't happen. Um I was that guy. This actually makes me think that there is some kind of like uh, thing going on with these 3D movies of the time, and they're um, being um, wanting to have these titles that are like uh, parentheticals. You have Space Hunter, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone, Star like, Chaser, the, zone the Legend of Orin, and Metal Storm, the Destruction of Jared Sin. <laughs> Like, what's going on with that? If you make a 3D movie, I guess that was like part of the package so. back then. I'm trying to fit. You have to have a colon title. in there somewhere. What are our thoughts on that? Colon or no colon in movie titles? Depends on the movie. Yeah. It really does. Usually done with sequels nowadays. I was Ouija no 2. Colon. Or Ouija colon. Uh, all the Lord of, of the Rings movies had colons. Uh, Do they have true. colons? I think so. Okay. Well, yeah, they have to. Lord, Lord of the Rings, the Rings colon, 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 colon The Fellowship of, of the Ring. No. Yeah. Yeah, I say no colons. Oh, you can't have colons. I don't think they had colons though. <laughs> but usually it implies a sequel. Not all your first it's... movie doesn't have the fucking colon. I guess it's but Star Wars the... colon A New Hope. There's no colon in there's... that. It's not Star Wars A New Hope. All it, one word. No colon or in all it. one sentence. Yeah, or a dash. Suck it. Oh, there's colons shit. in that. No, 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 I'm talking to like actual titles. This like, is IMDb. How much more actual do you get than That's... this? Oh, in the movie they don't have. They oh, didn't like have the... a colon in this. Look, it's a subtitle. There's Metal Storm and then on subscript. That's what you're talking about. In a mo- uh, yeah, and, yeah. In, in, in like the Lord of the Rings, they say you know, it's Lord of the Rings and then later on they show mm-hmm. Fellowship, like mm-hmm. the title Fellowship of the Ring. It's it's, it's like a separate scene. It's mm-hmm. later on. I'm just saying I'm anti-colon. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I get it, because nailing down these title conventions is important. It is. Mm-hmm. We have to do it at some point, Colin. That's right. we got to draw a line in the sand. Mm-hmm. So, Colons. Dojin. In his hunt, then, for uh, Jared Sin. Is that what he's hunting for? Because we were really confused about that what during the movie. What about the Lost movie. City? He's searching for Jared. What? He's searching for the Lost City. What about the dude? It's, it's fair. What's the dude's name? Rhodes. Yeah. Rhodes. 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 Played by the great Tim Thomerson, who is the best actor in this movie. He, was, yeah. he was the Han Solo of this movie. Yes. Yeah. Even though there seems so in the last 30 yeah, seconds. In the yeah. last scene, he was. In but the last 30 seconds, he was the Han Solo of this movie. Well, he's supposed to be. Well, I guess. Okay, so you're he, saying he's, he's, a, little, not, he's like, a little scoundrelly he, when he's like he, he goes it. he goes to a cantina and finds him and recruits him. He's Han Solo. Yep. Yeah, but for the first half, it was do it Dojin. Is that his name? Yeah. Right. Like he was trying to be the Han Solo character until that character was, was introduced, trying. and then it switched yeah. off. Because Diana is the Luke Skywalker character because her parents are killed in the thing, and now she's got no one left here, and she's gonna go off. But then the she switches into being Princess yeah. Leia halfway through and needing to be oh. and rescued for most of the Yeah. Movie. She conveniently gets a Conducted by Jared Sin through a method which <laughs> just boggles the mind. No idea. That's that's a good thing right there. You saw it. 
He yeah. had his little crystal doll. <laughs> no, I'm aware. His little crystal, action his figure. Little, his How? Little crystal voodoo doll. Yeah, it was a crystal Which voodoo doll. Which is the best creature in this movie. Oh. It's crystal the only voodoo creature doll. in this movie. But it, that's what I'm saying, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> but it's wonderful. First of all, he transports her. He's just through the sheer power of will. He's like, she, I want her here. Uh, and yeah. she just disappears and ends yeah, up there. Yeah, because he never sprayed her with the goo. I no. don't know if that means anything. I know. He, yeah, he just, sits in front of the fire and concentrates for like 30, yeah, <laughs> 30 seconds of a slow there. motion shot just of him staring at the camera. Telekinesis yeah. and or then something. He sends an electric thing creature to attack, quote unquote, attack Dogen. Dogen? Dogen. Dogen. And it's the it's like old Godzilla. <laughs> uh, Oh, it's a yeah. Power Rangers movie, basically. But they it is. Don't Rangers. say that about Power Rangers. <laughs> but they had clearly seen Tron at this point, yes. because the whole costume is it made out of, like, scotch tr- light yes. or whatever, yeah. so it's reflecting. Very Tron. Tron. Yeah. yeah, except they've drawn, like, 3D uh, lightning bolts, lightning bolts <laughs> yeah. around oh the thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic and a god-awful kind of amazing. You have to see it to believe it kind of way. I will send my best warrior to defeat him. <laughs> <laughs> danger, danger. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going to wait here. Okay, I'm going to pick up a rock and throw it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to wait for that rock and then smack it. Then I'm going to come after you. Yeah, it's need, a brilliant performance. We need to, to defeat him with water. Yeah. That's hidden in the rocks. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's almost like how yeah. he's just saying words at this point. <laughs> what? There's water hidden in the rocks? Yep. Yes, ladies That's and gentlemen. Yep. It. The solution is to shoot the rock and it will bleed water that the lightning creature steps in and shorts himself out. This is uh, in route to... So Diana is captured right here. And then we have to have a buddy for Dojin, right? Yes. So this is when he returns to the... Uh, or goes to, finds the tent city... And recruits Rhodes. The basically he's the used up sheriff, I think, mm-hmm. right? More so than the Han Solo. There's a little bit of Han Solo in there. Yeah, it's like El Dorado. Yeah. yeah. He has More to go so find El the old Very sheriff. Very much like El Dorado. Yes. Who's gonna help him out, but he's like soaked in whiskey at this point. He's gotta sober him up and get him out on the road so they can go put find that crutch under one of the arms. City. Get yeah. him out there. This is where there's also a high noon shootout. I guess the subtitle oh, or the tagline. <laughs> It's high noon. Oh, you're at the giving it way too much credit by calling it a high noon shootout. High noon. I mean, there was a, there was a high noon. Just because they put it on the front of the video does box does not make it, it true. So. What are you talking about? It's written down. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so is Metal <laughs> Storm, and that never off. happens either. Oh, that's yeah, very true. You got true. me. You got me. Yeah. God. Yeah. Well, there's a standoff or whatever. The guy's got to shoot like guys. That makes you think it's going to be like some awesome, good, bad, and the ugly kind of shootout, but it's not. The lasers are in 3D. Okay, they are. They shoot you in the face. So is a branch. <laughs> and a little, a little puppet creature. I love the little puppet creature. The little sandworm thing. Oh, yeah, oh I forgot about the those. baby tremors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the sock yeah. puppet They're tremors. Legit sock puppets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those poor stunt guys that were under sand having yeah. to do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Push their arms out and be like, ugh. I was trying to figure out how they did that. Then I'm like, oh, it's not that complicated after all. So the no. stage floor has a bunch of sand on it, and they're just pulling something underneath the sand. And then the, they cut him for a close up where you've mm-hmm. only got like something the size of this bar, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The guy's under there going, Ruff. right. Yeah. Yep. Put your leg right in the edge of the screen. All right, we'll bite it. Yeah. That's it. Yep. But we've got creatures. There are creatures. Like this is like an odyssey, a science fiction odyssey. Sure. Into the future. All right, I'm going with you on this one. Let's okay. go. All right, let's go on this trip, Colin. Right. Where else do we stop off? Oh, then we go to the uh, the the lost city, which is all just which smoke. Not filled. So lost. Yeah. It's basically a lost monument in a hot <laughs> yes, spring. In a, <laughs> in a hot spring. A city. No, it's it's definitely town. not a fucking it's a city. monument in a hot spring. Yet another lie. This movie is told. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, constant lies. Oh, yeah. This is true. I didn't even think about that. No, we yeah, because you're city. expecting like the lost city of gold, you know, yeah. like like Atlantis or some yeah, Atlantis. shit. Atlantis. Like no, it's busy it's, metropolis. Of some sort. It's a fucking monument in a hot spring. But yeah. we get a monster tomb, and what do they find there, Colin? Uh, a crystal skull mask. A crystal no, mask. crystal mask. Like, Sorry, you're right. Weren't we calling it crystal football earlier? Yeah, it kind of looks ball. like it. <laughs> you wear it. It's like, like, it like a crystal kind of fruit bowl. Basically, yeah. The ashtray closer. Yes. Yes. And somehow that also has psychedelic powers that allows Dojin, when he wears it, to be transported to the other realm. To the sexy plane. To the sexy plane, yeah. Because yes. at this point, it is kind of sexy. He's sexiness. like, yes. yeah. Because you go there and you sweat more. Yeah. Shirtless. 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 Shirtless and glistening. Yeah. Automatic sexiness. 
and you get an axe. And it, well, well, that adds to it. Yeah. Sexiness. And there's a burning tree. There's a burning tree. He chops into it, starts bleeding. The Sexy. symbolism. <laughs> It's a prophecy, Colin. That's right. It's a he's the chosen one, and the tree he's is Jared's the, sin. Yeah, he's the one to bring down the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. You sounded so confident, uh, Sean. I know. That's why I was like, we got to go with that. Yeah, I I, I'm, he's the I'm in. One to, I'm so in, he's Sean. George Washington at this point. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. It shall yeah. be fulfilled. Yeah. yeah no, it is. doesn't. Well, he ends up. The, this is the other like where it gets goofy too. He reads. <laughs> yeah, this is where it gets this goofy. Is where it, gets it goofy. just starts here. Right here. He re- meets Richard Mall from Night Court, who mm. is <laughs> yeah. uh, Hurok or Turok, yes. Hurok, the leader of the psych- one of the Cyclopean yes. tribes. Yes. Uh, who says you know like who? Which one of you found this mask? And when they identify who, it was like you live right. Except that you're on our land, so I have to kill you. you have to, yeah, you have to die. Well, unless you challenge me to a fight in the pit. <clears throat> I'm like, okay, so they wandered onto your land and stole a priceless, I assume, artifact mm-hmm. of your people, the magic mask, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which yes. you're going to give them because you found it. It's yours. But because well, you're yeah, on the we land, we have anyway. right. Yeah. <laughs> but because you're on the land, we have to kill you. But it's a fair fight, you Rules. know. Fight to the death, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Like all West Side Story style. Yeah. So you yeah. in a very narrow canyon with very, like yeah. one foot long, dull, size. rounded swords. Yeah. Yeah. They're and size. they're tied together. Uh, they're, well, they're holding a rope. The wrists are tied together. Well, West yeah. Side Story style. Like beat it. Yeah. Which Dojin yeah. fucking cheats at? Cheats. The little motherfucker. He's a cheater. That's right. Yeah. Cuts the rope. He can't cuts do that. No. That's not a fair fight. And wins, but he spares Hurok's life. Yes. Which means, of course, you're an honorable, honorable man. You're an honorable man, obviously. Did you know that Richard Maul nope. probably not. shaved <laughs> his head for this role and decided to, audition. to give it for, for Night Court? Well, he got, in, he got the audition for Night Court and went and said, like, I shaved my head because I'm doing this sci fi yeah. movie. And they're like, we love it. Keep it. And that's why I've Ball. never seen him with hair. Yeah. So I didn't know anything was different. Mm-hmm. He's also a freak show uh, past. Uh, we talked about him. He was mm-hmm. in House. Oh, he was, was Bull. The what, did you see? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was in House. Yeah. So he's been on this show yeah. twice. Wait, what's his name in Night Court? Bull. Bull. Yeah. Is he? That's why I said Bull. Well, in I thought Night you were Court. talking about House. No, in House it was. I like thought you said his Big name ben. was Bull in House. I'm like, that can't be right. Yeah, Big Ben in House. Okay. Yeah. With Bull in Night Court. Yes. Got it. So this, of course endears Dojin to the indigenous people so then they can go to the council meeting and confront Jared Sin. Mm. Which you could apparently just walk into. Yeah. Like, hey, I have a question. <laughs> can we not do this? And Jared Who's Sin's like, where are my security men? Where? Why aren't you in the back like keeping this man out? We know he's coming because I can see the future. Because I'm full vaguely, of magic. You got vaguely Yugoslavian there for a second. <laughs> it's like, where, where, why is this man? Why is, why is he here? Guards, <laughs> get rid of this man. Get him out of my set. I'm going to go smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's, a, wait, there's, a, there's a giant crystal there as well. Well, he doesn't have a lot of like men at this point. He's 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 killed, trying to gather he's them. Killed still. most of them. I think like, he's got like yeah. two guys. There's him and his son at yeah, this point. He's killed most of them. And so. like an array of uh, you know whatever the the cy- cyclopses Cyclo- cyclopians. cyclopians. Cyclopi. 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 So That's the, right. The plural. And uh, Jaredson worships a gigantic crystal. Yeah. Where he's gathering power with his little crystals. Yes. Because they steal people's souls yes. and contain them in these crystals. I love the way the scene where they find this out. Because they have to go to a crystal <laughs> dealer. Uh, who has a, I'm going to, uh, again, air quotes, store. Yes. Uh, in a Scaffling. cave. That's made of PVC pipe yes. scaffolding. <laughs> yes, it is. Where he basically goes like, hmm, I don't know what this crystal is. I've been dealing with crystals all my life, but it's I hot. can't tell this one. Yeah, it's hot. It feels alive. So he hangs it up in midair, which is awesome. Suspended in is it magic awesome field. That they're all tied to PVC pipe with some fishing line? Is that <laughs> awesome? We can't yeah. see. That was a all right. No, I'm here. with you. I'm with yeah. you. Let's magic do it. Magic field in between the PVC pipe. <laughs> he shoots a laser at it. And 
Nothing happens. So he shoot. He, he calibrates something. He shoots a laser at it again, and then the thing starts screaming. screaming. And he's like, "Oh my god! It's what I've always- I should have known. <laughs> it's a storage crystal, and it's full of souls." Right there, like, what the hell are we dealing with? What kind of technology do you have that a reveals this by shooting a laser at it? Yeah. And B, how did you know that like crystals do this? They steal yeah, people's pay, souls and store them inside the. They show this earlier when we first see like Jared Sin when he first shows up. He's just some vagrant they bring up, and he's just like, "This is for all of you." And he just holds a crystal to his neck and steals his soul. The method by which he plans to take over the world and cause the destruction of Jared Sin kind of boggles my mind. As in, I can't get my head around it. As in, I don't understand it at all. Right. So let's figure this out. He. Steals people's souls in these crystals. He yeah. feeds these crystals, the smaller ones, to a gigantic crystal. Yes. yes. Okay, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it ends. And that's it. Continue if you can. Uh, uh, okay. I'll All right. stand All right, right here. Uh, I also saw a reference to the movie Conan the Barbarian, where he said something about he is uh, serving... The evil master. Oh, the symbol on the crystal that they take to Zax, the uh, the crystal shop guy. Yeah. He says, "I recognize the symbol. This is the symbol of Set." There's an identical scene in Conan the Barbarian where he brings the sigil, and it's like it's the symbol of Set, right? Okay. Do we know what Set is? Uh, Set was a snake cult in real life, or in uh, Conan, I think it was a pagan snake cult okay. in Metal Storm. There are the dark lords of Set rule in some other dimension that Jared Sin is trying to <laughs> channel their energy by making sacrifices to his gigantic energy crystal. <laughs> his big phallic energy. Yeah, and my brain is hurting here trying to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. As it should. Is this working? Is this Colin's what's Colin's about to have a scanner's moment. His head's just going to explode. <laughs> Crystals. Jared Sin. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go any further. I don't so is know. Is he trying to like merge worlds? Does he get like if he builds enough thing? Is he going to get enough power to just lay waste to the land? Well, he is, the only thing he says, you know, she says like, "What are you doing using this for?" Uh, and Diana does, and he says, "So I can you know destroy my enemies." Yes. That's all it's about. Somehow with and the power he, of the crystal. Doesn't he use it like in that scene? Like he the the crystal shoots down at them. Like he's controlling it. Yes. He's like okay. So it gives him a, a thought laser. Yeah. Mm, thought okay. Lasers. Yeah. All right. Thought lasers. And it wasn't all that strong because he hadn't completed his final sacrifices. Right. Yes, that was which the, were be the last two. And yeah. that would give him complete control over the universes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the Dark Tower yes. crystal that right. binds them all together. Right. Yes. But Dojin, sneaky bastard, that and he is. and uh, very sneaky, powerful. Sneaky, and then just walks right in. He is yeah. a master orator who gets up is there. He? And convinces all of the tribes to basically turn against Jared Sin. No, I think Hurok does that. What? Hurok is basically the guy, the warrior st- speaks the truth. Jared Sin is a false yeah. leader. He's like, let him speak. That's all he does. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember what, I don't remember what Dogen, Dogen said. He's trying to rule you. Yeah. yeah. Jared Sin's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> he would make you all slaves. Yeah, someone in the back's like, "Do you have proof?" <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because then Jared sends like, "I'm your true master," and he's like, "Master," and that was it. You don't yeah. rule yeah. me. That was it. Yeah, that was, yeah. It. that was it. Turned them all against him. Yeah. So Jared Sin, knowing that he is uh, going to be probably pulled them from limb here in front of these people, vanishes into in thin <laughs> fucking air thin in air. the world's most thin confusing air. scene. So we're like, so what's happening? Why is he running away? Because we're wondering why Dojin is running away to find Yeah, because he disappears, like, and then all of a sudden he's running to a speeder. And we're like, what? Where's he going? Where are I you going? He's running away in counters. Like, he's like, I'm done. But he knows what's going on, old Dojin. He's like, you got to get on a speeder and fly, follow this guy. Where'd he go? I don't know. But the next thing we see... They're both Jared's, on speeders. It's daytime, all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. On the other side of the mountain, right? Where it, the, the sun's shining. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're flying in these speeders, shooting at each other. For a they really, like, they like really twice long time, and then fly for five minutes. Yeah. A long, lots time. of aerial With footage of flying over canyons. And, and Jaredson is just like appreciating the countryside. Like that's what I think he's, he's just like doing. He's looking down, yeah, going like they are. Like that. They <laughs> are. Build my mansion. Over They're on there. a pleasure cruise. Like they are just <laughs> and, uh, chilling. Nice country drive there. Until he opens up the magical vortex. 
Like you do. Oh, Lords of Set, please <laughs> open the something or other. The open black the hole. kaleidoscope of triangles and lights. <laughs> and lights. You know, yeah. listener. I just. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm listening to what we're saying here, trying to be like, if I've never seen this movie before and you're listening to us describe it, this just has to sound insane. Sounds like we're having a stroke. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. it sounds like we're having yeah, a collective we just all stroke. From a fever dream. <laughs> yeah. And we're all just like, oh, Jared Singh was there and crystals and. I assure you we're not. Ball. Are you sure you were Ball not, was there. We're not smelling toast or yeah. anything. Yeah. Like, this is real. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, everything tastes like oranges. For yeah. We're having a real problem right now. A mass stroke. Yeah, but at least, at Needle least, stroke. this is the moment in the movie where everything's going to get this wrapped up. This is the moment. Yeah. This is it because finally, Dojin has while they're in, while they're in this energy vortex in his he, sights. He's got him in his sights. Yeah. yeah. And then Jared He's Sin, waving, he's waving, he's shooting lasers, he's got him. He's like dead to rights. Dead bang, he's got him. And then. And then, all of a sudden, Jared Sin fucking disappears. Portal. And the portal vanishes. Ludicrous speed, gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Dojin is back in the real time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back in Death Valley. Yeah. Yeah. And there you go. Credits. <laughs> no, no, because then he comes no, back. No, he's got the Then he comes scroll. back. Ah, yes. And he's like, he's gone. He's going to be trapped in another dimension, and he's going to rule everything, and we've got to stop him. So he shoots the giant crystal. But yeah, later. Because I think by shooting the crystal, he's trapping uh, Jared, Jaredson in another That's dimension. What I gathered. He's trapped in, or he could be anywhere. He could reappear at any time and any world, yes. right? Yeah. But we're going to trap him there so he can't move from that world by blowing right. up the crystal. Yeah. And then Dojin's like, but it's my job to go. I'm going to go stop him. So I assume that Metal Storm 2 uh, takes place on Earth, right? Because that would be cheap to shoot. It's going to take place in like downtown Los Angeles. And Of course, because all in- sequels take place in Los <laughs> Angeles. <laughs> How is he going to find him if he shot the crystal? I don't know. And because that makes, maybe he came I out. Thought, I figured like he trapped him or he's trapped. Like That's it. We've defeated him. He's or maybe down. he came out before he destroyed the crystal. I don't think so. I think he's trapped. He's on another, he, on another world. Well, then no. what does he care? What does he... Because <laughs> it's his responsibility. He's got... To, yeah, I don't know. He's got to bring him to justice for all the massacres that he caused in his life. So... That was it. That was the end of the movie. If so we, we were it. interpreting the title as the destruction of Jared Sin, like, by the end of this movie, at least we're going to get the bad guy, no. you would be wrong. He's not destroyed, Colin. He's if anything, destroyed. he's more emboldened than he was before. Yeah. yeah. He might be stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. But at least our three heroes are going to get together and go follow him into uh, Metal Storm 2. God, I hope not. Metal there you go. Storm. Well, history has told us. Uh, <laughs> Metal Storm 2. This <laughs> time, there's a storm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The death of Jared Sin, but he doesn't die in that one either. It's actually like he dies and comes back or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this time, we promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so sad. God. Should have had little dolls and little those little trucks that you would play with and stuff like that. And the, the ball do- toy with the arm that you it could fucking... Been, this could have been something. Shoot. At least that's oh, what they were thinking, right? Figure. They wanted to fucking make figure. a goddamn action for this. Is like post oh, yeah, Star Wars. That's perfect, like psh, yeah, claws yeah. and coming out, and get you get the spray ball, one with the little doll, squeeze doll. ball yeah. behind it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck, man. Little crystal voodoo dolls. Yeah. Oh my God. Get your ball and uh, Chimera <laughs> crystal voodoo doll and Doge and action figures all sold separately from Metal Pick up Storm your ball. By and Mattel. Go home. <laughs> 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 all the missed opportunities. All the missed opportunities. But hey, if they don't write it, we at the Freak Show will. And there you go. Uh, we just make all these different futures for movies that didn't go anywhere, like Metal Storm. Metal Storm. Well, that brings us probably to the end of I Metal Storm. Do we have anything yeah. else to contribute? <sighs> to the the telling of this tale i i have one uh one positive i want to point out because there really wasn't much about kelly preston in this no i have one positive thank god thank god that he did not take her as like a weird slave bride and there was no like changing of the clothes where she wears some like skimpy because that happens in every single fucking sci-fi movie yeah yeah you have Thank to change in front there. of me. Yes. Yeah. PG yes. for the kids. There's no sexuality to any of these characters. No, but no, no I suppose I mean, like, though, they do make out. I mean, like, even like, <clears throat> like, yes. like in Flash Gordon, they make her the bride and mm-hmm. she's wearing like the weird slave, like fancy slave outfit, slave Leia, that kind of thing. Thank God that did not happen in this. Mm-hmm. I was so happy they didn't take that route. Yeah. 
I just Agreed. that was my observation. Agreed. She doesn't have much. Yeah. She doesn't really have any agency, but like, yeah. But still, I mean, at least they didn't take it a step further. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like that wasn't what they were going for. Mm-hmm. They were hoping to sell them on, on the yeah. sci-fi <laughs> and the action. <laughs> That's what they're like. We don't need that. We have this. There's a character in this who says, speaking to the PG like rated, uh, you know. Oh uh, God. Yeah. I'm yeah, too didn't... old for this stuff. Uh, it was so uh, awful. Uh, but you were tired of hearing it because you've heard it all your life. They yeah. have they weren't doing it in Lethal Weapon. If, do, but do you think anybody went and saw this movie and was like, "That's really funny"? Oh, no. he's too old. He's, too old <laughs> no. yeah. he's been through a lot. It's hilarious. You are correct. Yeah. Nobody. All right. Well, that uh, brings us to a segment of our show. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some and read some of your mail that you've written in about Metal Storm and some of the other episodes that we've done. Uh, And then we're going to come back and each one of us is going to give you our review of Metal Storm, which I'm sure you can't wait to hear. You never know how this is going to go. <laughs> if, we haven't been, if we haven't been telegraphing this, uh, everybody might love you it. Never, you never know. You I don't know. Never no. Unless you do. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, to let the suspense build, why don't we call our mailman, Igor, to the table? Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Do you think him and Ball would be friends? He's got his little ball armor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a fan. We should get him a friend yeah, like Ball. Why do you like this, Igor? <laughs> <laughs> his arm squirts something else. Oh, that's oh, 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 sorry, it does that. <laughs> Uh, well, we should let you know how you can get a hold of us again on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Tonight, MFL writes in oh, and yeah. says, uh, Metal Storm is a Charles Band gem. Have you guys thought about covering... Doll Man versus Demonic Toys. I thought they were going to be like, Metal Storm is a movie. <laughs> and then he's done. That's what I thought that was going to say. But I'm is like, it a movie? Ah. <laughs> it's an effort. Would... <laughs> Doll Man versus Demonic Toys? It was shot on film. <laughs> Okay. That we we know of. So it is something so that is film. documented on film. Yeah. All right. Uh, I haven't heard, I haven't heard of that movie. Doll Man vs. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard of that. Man. Demonic Toys Demonic was a whole toys? series, and that's one of them. Yeah. This is, and and Tim Thomerson Rhodes was the Doll Man in a series of movies where he was the Doll Man. He was also the uh, the time cop in uh, Trancers. Oh yeah, Tim Thomerson's so like he's a, got like a little history there. He's a guy, and he's in Near Dark also as the dad. Oh, yeah, Tim Thomerson Near needed dark. to be in better things. You he was always one of those guys. that was like, know. you know, Maybe he's a better come. actor than the movies they stuck him in. Um, Daniel Irwan writes in and says, "It sucks if you're not using anaglyph 3D paper glasses to watch this movie." <laughs> Well, well, he's getting, well, he's we getting didn't, old school. So. No, we saw it on digital 3D, <laughs> which you can find now on the Blu-ray from Shout Factory Entertainment. Buy oh, it. Shout Factory, you did this Thanks, today. Shout Factory. <laughs> yeah. no, we're just putting your box and hope the price goes down. <laughs> the B-Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, this was the first film I ever saw on VHS. It was great. When I was 12. Thank you. I was going to say, it was the last time you watched this movie. It says, a hashtag, uh, was I an idiot at 12? Question. <laughs> That's a, that, is, that is a legit hashtag question. Uh, oh, it's an it important question. You have the wherewithal of the question that is like, maybe I was an idiot at 12. It's an important question. Yeah. Uh, it's an important question. Thank you for being question. aware. Self-aware yes, enough yes. of yourself is like, I may have been dumb. Yeah. Uh, Bob. Thanks for writing in, Bob. Bob. He Thanks, Bob. Rates, what about Bob? He rates uh, <laughs> Metal Storm a 2 out of 10 in 2D. So boring. But it's a 5.5 out of 10 in 3D. The effects really pop. Really? So it's still failing at 50%, though. Still an F. But, <laughs> yeah. but those branches sticking out at you, they <laughs> knocked yeah. it up a couple pegs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. You, <laughs> you stopped reading from the paper. I'm like, did you print out a paper for one quote from our fan mail? No, we have uh, uh, some much. comments okay. on Waterworld that we ah. didn't get to on our Waterworld episode. They've now just heard this. Uh, Dr. Croston. Croston? Croston. Doctor. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. Writes in and says, uh, I've seen the Waterworld theme park show more than I've seen the movie. 
And yeah. Dave House 86 writes in and says, Dryland is not a myth. I've seen it. I think he's quoting. I think so. Yeah. I feel like it is. He's that yeah. excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine the theme park show is probably better than the yeah. movie. It sounds pretty cool, actually. When you <laughs> posted it, I was like, yes, that's it. I've been to that. Yeah. The, yes, I was there when it was a thing. Where yeah. it was the world show, and they had like dudes doing jumps and ski doos and what have you. And I remember exploding that. all over yes, the place. And it was probably it was like, like it was the water the version set. of like the Indiana Jones like theater show where things would blow yeah, up. Yeah, they say it's like really impressive. Yeah, like, oh, it yeah. continues to get. I guess I posted that too. That it gets pretty good reviews from the people who attend. Is it in America though? Is like Universal Studios I, Singapore. Hong Kong. They had, I th- they had to have had it in Florida. You said you saw it, right? Yeah, uh, yeah so. Florida. Okay. I believe they did. I don't, I don't remember seeing it in Florida. No? I went there a lot when I was a kid. Are you sure it was? I thought it was LA. I don't know. If you, mm-hmm. it's probably on our Facebook post. Actually, if you go back and look, our, and I don't, I don't know if we mentioned that on our Waterworld episode, but the quote, uh, "Dry land is not a myth." I've seen it is not actually a line from the movie. They say dry land is not a myth, but nobody says that they've seen it. Well, maybe he's just saying yeah. that. Actually, dry that that quote because he's seen it. Is actually, that like the, one of actually, those misattributed quote, quotes? Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. quote is actually from the cable guy quoting Waterworld myth. Holy like, un- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Holly knows her fucking oh Waterworld yeah. shit. I know my, knows her cable I know guy my cable guy, guy dude. Yeah. I love cable guy. Oh, cable guy. <laughs> All right. Well, like we promised, there it is. We are going to go around the table. You're going to get to hear what everybody thought of Metal Storm. Who's going to go first? Sean, what did you think of Metal Storm? Fucking the destruction of Jared Sin 3D. Yes, please. Colin, I don't know if I can ever. Uh, I can. I, I, I apologize to everyone. I feel like this is my fault. <laughs> that don't I, beat yourself I don't up, Sean. I've made I don't such a you. big deal of this movie to Colin that I feel like I forced him to pick it and bring it here tonight. No, here's the thing. Colin talked about it so much that I think all of us were like, just pick it. Just bring the movie I think, I mean, so I we can yeah, experience it. but it was one of those, it. like, well, you know, blah, 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 like, metal. It's a punchline, right? Right. It's a punchline. <laughs> you should never see the joke. You're just yeah. like, oh, yeah, Metal Star. That's but funny. that worked out okay the last time I think we did that. Because I what remember we Star for? Crash was one of those. It was the Star greatest. Star Crash was fucking hilarious. Oh, so good. Yeah. Star Crash is the best. This I don't think is that, not Star Crash. I don't think we knew it was going to be a punchline. <sighs> yeah, but whenever we've talked about it, right? I mean, I mean, you've always said like, you guys are going to, yeah, it's funny. You guys are going to hate this movie. Yeah. And uh, whew, I mean, what happens? <laughs> Nothing happens in this movie. They walk around. They walk around a lot. They drive around a lot. They fly around a lot. And in 3D, in Sean. In 3D. Yeah. Uh, it maybe it's only, I was. I would say it's, it's only saving grace, but it doesn't really save anything. Um, <laughs> the, I, it's, it's, I mean, I wasn't, I, I wasn't bored watching this movie. Thank God it's only 84 minutes long, but I just, I, nothing, nothing makes sense in this movie to me. Uh, the, I, it's got no really redeeming qualities. Um, I question... Uh, every character's motivation in this movie. Um, Kelly Preston is put to no good use. Uh, our leading man has one facial expression and really doesn't do a whole lot. The uh, Jared Sin, our bad guy, he does not get destructed and he's not really a great bad guy. I don't. He's, he's not threatening whatsoever. Um, things just happen for no reason and are not explained in this movie. And I'm not saying you have to explain everything to me, but there, there's no context for what happens in this movie. <laughs> you know what the bad guy reminds me of? Because, uh, sorry, listeners, we were, uh, some of us were talking about The Office earlier, mm. and it reminds me, his his level of, like, evilry, like, bad guyness, is, this, is the same as, like, them, like, the characters fighting for the regional manager position on The Office. Basically. Yeah. Like, it's that level. It's on that same level. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh, I will rule them with my giant crystal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, continue. <sighs> God. I mean, I, I would say I'm glad I finally saw it, but am I? I don't. I mean, I'm glad I I'm I'm glad I never have to think about this movie ever again. 
That's, so so I, I I can't recommend uh, Metal Storm. I give it uh, one ball out of five balls. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I do not recommend Metal Storm. <laughs> the destruction of Jerry. I'm glad Sin. you brought back your rating one system ball. for this movie. Yeah. One, it's ball. one ball. One ball. Is that an armless ball or an arm ball? Uh, we'll go for arm ball. Okay. <laughs> I'll give him that. He can have the full arm in the rating. Um, I, uh, I was bored with this movie. I was very much bored with this movie. I checked Instagram a lot during this movie. <laughs> um, it, 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 so many, so many questions unanswered. Why, Colin? That's my first question. <laughs> so many answers on questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I hated this movie. I, I, I told you the only good thing I had about this was... Kelly Preston not being made into some weird slave bride at the end. That was <laughs> the all I got. Was something they didn't. Do. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> That's the As, best part. Yeah, which I'm sure well, wasn't on purpose. I'm sure there's yeah. like logistical budget reasons why Probably. they didn't do that. You know, yeah. like that's all. That's or the only reason they did. Like, come on, get naked, please. We need it for this movie. And she's like, no, nope. nope. Yeah. Uh, then they kick rocks and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I. That's it. I, I can't say anything else about this movie. I hated it. Uh, it was a mistake. And <laughs> <laughs> this funded a man's entire career. <laughs> and like I said, when time travel's perfected, we will go correct that mistake. <laughs> uh, I, there's nothing about Metal Storm, the destruction of Jared's in 3D that I can recommend to anyone ever in the history of time. Because it's all a lie. It, I can't. It's, it is. The whole thing is a lie, and I would feel like a fraud. Um, I give it no ratings whatsoever. No balls. Whoa, no, whoa, balls. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> no balls. No balls. The lowest. No. Nope. So is this the worst movie you've seen on the Freak Show? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, so this is the bar for the bottom. I think, just, I think can it we is. Go up from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or can we find a movie that's worse than Metal Storm? No, we're going to be not. talking oh. about this forever. Oh. At least it's no Metal Storm. I see it now. Yeah, <laughs> it takes the place of the Mean Guns <laughs> for the new no, group. No, Mean Guns yeah. is worse. Well, you I weren't know, here I know, for Mean Guns. They weren't here mean for Mean Guns, guns so we have worse. to find a new collective movie to hate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it shall be Metal Storm. So there's a part in this movie where what's his name? Dojin? Is that it? Dojin, right? Dojin. Sure. Okay. Where he says, This is the only note I took the whole time too. Uh wish I'd been awake to enjoy it. The same cannot be said for how I feel about this movie. Uh. <laughs> Don't feel that way about this movie at all. Um uh the like we said, the whole title's a, a lie. Um, but that's just one of the many problems with this movie. I did not enjoy it. It felt really, really, really long, even though it's it doesn't it's even short. hit the ninety minutes. <laughs> um, but it, it it was a test of my patience. Uh, I I cannot recommend it. It's it's definitely the worst movie I've seen in the short time I've been on the Freak Show. <laughs> um, so this is my low end bar for sure for now on. Um, yeah, I don't recommend it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I could facilitate Ow. this historic <laughs> uh. moment of uh, the Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't hate the movie as much as you do, but a lot well, of that you have it on Blu-ray. Yeah, own it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to fucking track this thing down. I've had this. Why on, so? Uh, well, I explained at the beginning of the. I've been after the Great White Buffalo. I you still have. need. When did you first watch this movie? Well, I used to see it on VHS because, okay. I mean, I knew, you know, the 3D films that were out there. Amityville 3D, uh, Treasure of the Four Crowns. That's worse than oh, this. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Friday the 13th, Jaw, uh, Jaws right, 3D, right. Parasite. And uh, there's probably one or two that I'm even forgetting. Though. There's like Rottweiler in 3D, which I've never seen. Shogun, Revenge of the Shogun or something like that in 3D. Yeah. Yeah. There was a bunch that. of stuff that was made in that period of time, but there's the the major Hollywood ones anywhere were the ones I wanted to track down. And like I said, I'm still waiting on Friday the 13th Part 3, a proper Blu-ray release, and Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone with uh, Peter Strauss and Molly Ringwald and Michael Ironside and Ernie Hudson. Oh, yeah, you oh, got to see that one, too. Uh, that's like the better version of Metal Storm, but they're both similar films that's where they're that's like... That's not saying much. In the post, like, you know, some kind of post-apocalypse futuristic junk future right where a uh, wandering uh, soldier of fortune has to traverse a barren landscape to you know conquer the bad guy and on the way kind of like an odyssey uh, type you know uh, storyline <clears throat> uh, encounters all these like little like weird characters along the way 
Uh, this is done to greater or lesser extent, depending on the movie. Metal Storm doesn't do it too well because it's hampered, I think, by budget, number one, by imagination, number two. Uh, this is a movie that feels like it was kind of written by a 12-year-old, right? With the <laughs> yeah. understanding that a 12-year-old has of uh, drama. They have seen stuff in other movies and realize that like characters are supposed to do things, yeah. but the inner life of w- these characters is unknown to the writer. This Alan J. Adler, who I should look up and see if he actually did Big anything name. else again in his career. Um, the actors then are hired basically for a paycheck to do something. Because Mike Preston, playing Jared Sin, like, he has to be sitting there just going, well, I don't understand half the shit that's coming out of my mouth. Or any mm-hmm. of it. I'm just yeah, going to say it with villainous relish. <laughs> you know? And he comes off over the top and directionless because he doesn't know what he's doing. I do think, uh, you know, that Tim Thomerson comes off the best. Uh, he has, like, a personality to his character that's probably just his personality uh, coming through. So it's like, yeah, you should hire that guy to do something. And I think that the uh, score by uh, Richard Band is better than the movie deserves. Uh, it just It's a nice kind of, you know, upbeat sci-fi action mm-hmm. score for that period of time. But usually he did a lot of good stuff in a bunch of shitty movies. <laughs> Sometimes it's all we have in this movie. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's pro- those are like the two shining lights, and the rest of this is pretty desperate question because we have previously talked about and colin inform us ahead of time that there is no heavy metal in this movie but did you do you think that it would have been better if there had been a heavy metal score from a yeah. Well, we do enjoy Saturday Night Freak Show tributes, ladies and gentlemen. If you can find a scene from Metal Storm that you can set to the heavy metal score oh, please of do. your choice, That'd please awesome. do send it to us, and we will put it on our Facebook page, we blast it out. To, that's right. Yeah. Internet famous In like us. making ourselves famous. <laughs> the internet radio superstars. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's see what that looks like. Um, I do think that the movie was conceived completely around the idea that it was going to be done and projected and seen by a wide audience in 3D. And to that effect, I guess, is how I kind of judge the movie. It's like the the storyline is secondary because it's all built around <clears throat> we're going to poke shit at you. And all the scenes are set up to like, you know, what in this when this guy punches that guy, we throw this thing here. What are we throwing at the camera? And. It's not entirely su- successful. I've seen other movies that have a higher ratio, like even Friday the Thirteenth is like yeah. poking stuff at it. Yeah, like, it feels like every five minutes, and everything. Yeah. yeah, five, yeah, yo-yos and sticks yeah. and like all sorts of stuff. Harpoons, <clears throat> mm-hmm. harpoons and Jaws is less frequent than that, but it's more frequent than Metal Storm, even yes. I think, and more memorable. And but those are the reasons that I, as a 3D aficionado, watch these movies is because I want to be able to sit there and see the you know the illusion of something coming out you know within like an inch of my face because it's like movie magic to me. I love it, and I think I love it so much that I'm like, okay, this movie really sucks, but that effect is pretty fucking awesome because it's sitting right in front of my face. And in these 80s movies, again, it's gimmicky as all hell, and it sucks if you watch it in 2D, <clears throat> but they hang on these shots of a tree branch or, you know, a telescoping arm, or, you know, whatever they hang on them. So you actually have time to look at and, you know, focus your eyes and appreciate what you're, you know, the, the illusion of it, that somehow the screen has been broken and this thing is reaching <laughs> way out and nearly touching you. Um, that's fantastic to me. I get a big kick out of it, and I'm, I keep bemoaning the lack of it in every modern-day 3D movie because now I go to see something in 3D, and you come away from it, and you're like, oh, it was, you know, like I just saw Valerian mm-hmm. in 3D the other week. <clears throat> and it's a movie that was created and composed with the idea of being in 3D, but you cannot remember a single moment of 3d that made it worth seeing it in 3d. Like you go see Thor, Captain America, any of these things in 3d, but I remember like, yeah, I saw force awakens in 3d and there's a, uh, um, star destroyer that's sitting way out over the mm-hmm. several rows in front of you. You remember that moment, you know, or Beowulf when some guy rides up with a spear, it sticks way out. You remember the 3d gimmick moments. 
and movies now aren't giving you the gimmick moments. I mean, now they like fake it in a way that's offensive to me, like Ghostbusters and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah. and that, where they put this fake. They shoot the movie sixteen by nine. Oh yeah, and but the they black put bars. these fake letterbox bars, yeah. and then certain moments like are able to extend past the bottom border of the yeah. screen or the top border of the screen, and they're like, "Look, we're throwing stuff at you," and I'm like. You know, in the 50s and in the 80s, they did this for real. And now you're doing some kind of thing to convince me that it, it looks like you're reaching out yeah. of the screen. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So, uh, you know, that irritates me. And I'm like, you should go back and do that kind of stuff. Because if you're the, the you know, uh, pointing at the box, this kind of stuff. <laughs> you. Because then people might actually have an appreciation for 3D cinema. They'd at least say, I paid the premium to see it in 3D and I got, you know, something for my money. And uh, now you don't. Now 3D is going away because everybody's like, I didn't see anything there that, you know, that I can remember. Um, granted, this is kind of gimmicky because this is kind of like, you know, when stereo records first came around, <clears throat> they would bounce. You know, they play like uh, the guitars over on the left and the singers over on the right. They do things to say, like, look, we're in stereo, mm-hmm. you know, and then eventually they figured out, like, well, oh, this is. It creates a more natural feeling soundscape and, you know, then you get 5.1 and all that stuff. So this kind of feels like those early days where you're playing around with that, you know, the third dimension. I would recommend Metal Storm under the following caveat. If you are interested in what I just described, then you should check it out. <laughs> By no means would I recommend this movie to someone who wanted to see a good movie or was interested in, you know, uh, right. science fiction or films or storytelling or acting or a good, you know, good story or to see it in 2D is worthless. Yeah. It's a worthless movie in 2D. But in 3D, suddenly it's like, Meh, you know, but yeah, I don't think this is for most of you listening. So there you go. That's that's my take on Metal Storm and Charles Band. That man that out man. there, like, hasn't done, I don't know, I got to go back and look at his filmography. He did another movie, I traveled to Chicago to go see, down in the city, The the Creeps. Oh, yeah. In 3D, which was, I think, the first movie that he did in 3D after, since Metal Storm. Yeah. It was in the 90s. So, yeah, that's how obsessed I am. But uh, he just makes, like, tons and tons of crap and knows that it's crap, and people keep watching it. And he's still making Crap. Crap. <clears throat> and still has a career selling his old crap. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know where Full Moon is now, but he's kind of somewhere on the level of, like, trauma. Sure. The Lloyd Kaufman of our day. Yeah. Yeah. I hear more about trauma, though, than I ever do of Full Moon. Yeah. Like, it's not like it's in the conversation anymore, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have, like, their own little fan club. and Sure. Like oh, they yeah. they oh, keep yeah. feeding, but and there's still movies coming out, but they're, you know, Puppet Master 16 or whatever the hell. It was Ghoulies 2. That was Alan Band. That Albert? Watched. Albert Band, yes. Oh, he directed that? We that? Watched. Yeah, he directed Ghoulies 2. Oh, okay. That's what we watch here on All the right. free show. Good callback. Yeah. All right. I mean, I looked it up, but I'll take, the, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the callback. All right. Well, we've talked enough about Metal Storm. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... John, what are we Sean. watching next week? What's next week, we all have the right to remain silent forever. We will be watching Maniac Cop. Dun, dun, all dun, right, dun, all right. Starring, what's his name? Charles Zador, Zadar, Zadar, yeah, Zadar, Charles Zadar from Tango and Cash. Yeah, but it's got uh, Bruce Campbell. It's got Bruce and- Campbell and Tom Atkins. Oh my god, <laughs> so many classics. Show. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> everybody's in it. So there you awesome go. I bet you can't wait for that. That's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, ladies and germs. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>